I knew there was something I forgot to do. We had to run to the hardware store real quick. And we were on our way back. And I'm looking at my glasses and I'm like, shit, I need to, I need to clean my glasses before we uh, get going here and sat down, hit start stream, and of course I forgot I needed to clean them. Cause uh, of course I did. It's all kinds of dust that didn't want to get blown off of them. Alright. We had to walk down to the hardware store real quick. My dowel rods came and then I realized, oh, I need to be able to cut these. And uh, the husband has like saws of doom. And I'm like, well, can we get a little tiny hand saw that, that I can use so I don't have to bother you? Um, that way, if I fuck it up, it's my own damn fault. So. That's what we did real quick. We're just getting our colors here. How's everybody doing today? Pretty good, I hope. Alright, so we're gonna be picking back up with where we left off yesterday. Sorry, I do have some fans on. Um, it's not all that much warmer than yesterday, but uh, really hot after our walk and it felt kind of hot in here so just trying to cool things down a little bit helps or not. I did get a little bit of editing done last night. I was still on that second live stream, but um, that second live stream was I think three hours on the last project and uh, I've got that one cut down to 45, well no, half an hour. So like a half hour remaining to edit off of it. So I'm like, yay! Not bad for for one editing session. I mean, it did take me a couple of hours, but then I couldn't take editing anymore and had to take a break, so. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm done with this for today. that to stand out a little bit, but we'll see. We will see. Alright, I forgot to do the thing. So, we're following along with Bob Ross's Season 3 of The Joy of Painting. Um, instead of using paint this time, we are needle felting. So um, if you'd like to see the tutorial in full because we do have it sitting on pause and we don't really play it with the audio on it, we're just kind of looking for what he's doing, um, you can find the tutorial in full on the YouTube channel, on his YouTube channel. Um, there at the link in the chat. 
Sorry if there's like a little weird humming noise. I can't figure out if it's the air pump or if it's the filter itself on the beta tank rattling. I don't know what that is. That just kind of started recently there. I haven't had the chance to investigate because it kind of started right when I went live. It's kind of coming and going, so I'm not sure... what all that's about. So when we stopped yesterday we had finished putting in our background shadow base of our horizon line shrubbery. So now we're just kind of coming back and uh, working on finishing up filling in around that. particular tree branch in our tree trunk in here so I might just end up laying it over top of it. That's probably the better way to go here at this point. So I haven't had the chance to try out the new hand saw on the dowels that showed up so that will probably be either tonight or tomorrow's project. I still need to shampoo a rug. I haven't quite... I, I never did it last week. I wasn't feeling um, up to dealing with that, so... I kind of don't have a choice this week. It needs to be done. some way, shape, or form, I need to get that done. I've got a bit to do tomorrow. I need to get the backlog of recycling out of our kitchen, get that outside, you know, house chores. ever dreaded house chores that never seem to end. I kind of need to do laundry, but I don't know if that's going to happen tomorrow. It might just be bulky stuff that's in our hamper. Uh, I gotta see what the husband's at for clothes. Oh, I said we might need to do laundry tomorrow, but I don't know what you're at for clothes still available, so... Uh, I'm okay for now. Did he at least pee? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, we got back, and the husband was about to sit down. I said, you might as well just take Momo to potty now, because you know you're no longer going to be sitting down, like, maybe five minutes and he's gonna want to potty and um he's like yeah all right so he went to grab his leash and momo just laid there looking at him and we're like come on let's go potty and then zuzu showed well, up and we're like he mostly wanted his uh he mostly wanted his chair time so he got it so uh when zuzu showed up because he heard the leashes and he's like oh goodie time and we're like you don't need to pee and he's like i just want the goodie so we're like okay and then about 10 minutes later, Momo gets up and walks over to the husband and he's like, hey. 
guess what time it is. They're like, really? Like, now you get up? stuff in and you know go as little or as heavy as you want on this stuff I'm trying to refrain from adding the buttercup yellow to this section because we're gonna have a lot of it in the next section I just didn't really want it to uh, blend in too much I don't know if that's going to be possible, but we'll see. slow process. As you start to, you know, build up your layers and things. And again, I want to go with the less is more approach right now because as, I mean, it doesn't look like I have very much there, but as you start to stab through, it brings all of the fibers in together and it's going to make it seem a bit thicker than what you thought you were. Hey! Hey, Peabot! Don't pull a cow. That's enough. <coughs> Peabot's been ornery today. Surprised. Cat dominance displays. Must be a spring thing. They're both males and they're both fixed. Peabot's been getting a little extra territorial lately. He's tried to go through our screen door three times. Thank goodness we have it double screened now. I think that's the only thing that stopped him from breaking the original screen that was on there, because the original screen's pretty pretty old. And uh slammed into our very, very thin old window couple of times trying to get the cat outside, which is why a cat outside can't come inside. Now he's trying to grab Ed by the back of the neck. For cat reasons, I suppose. So we'll 
work on getting this section put in here. I wish people wouldn't do that because then I get nervous. There's about to be an accident out front. Somebody was fucking around the other night. It sounded like they were hydroplaning, but they might have just been busy being an asshole. <coughs> Which is entirely possible around here. wasn't sure what happened to the green. I was like, didn't I still have green fluff down? And uh, everybody's trying to get their grass cut. Because we're supposed to have four days of rain of some description. Although I haven't checked on it since I got up. I was last night when I went to bed. I was like, oh goody. Four days of rain. I mean, we need the rain. Don't get me wrong, but the grass is also getting a bit long, and we can't really cut it very well. If it's uh, going to be sopping wet, so. What is everybody beeping their horns at? Is there like an animal in the road or something? Because that's the second time. Like a loose dog or something? Or are people just being weird? People are just being weird today. It's a road ragey today. I have no idea. But I kind of wish they would not get the fuck off. And if they're trying to beep to the person on the right on lawnmower, why would you do that? Dude does not need that kind of shock and scare while operating heavy machinery. That's just dangerous. Stop that. You can call them or text them when you get home and be like, Hey, I saw you. While you were working. That's fine. Don't do that. That's kind of mean. I can hear the lawnmower running, but I don't know where it's at. I don't think it's our neighbor. Russell needs to cut the grass this afternoon or evening. Apparently our neighbor said she told the uh, neighbor kid, she would give them a couple of dollars if when they got home from school they'd come over and pick up all the sticks out of the yard. I'm like, we could have fucking done it. <laughs> Wait, that's fine. I just need yeah, I did want to rob the kids a couple bucks if I could get it. I mean, I know she's really tight for money. I mean, we could have just fucking did it. I would have just put some gloves on and helped you collect them all. There's quite a few substantial guys out there that our lawnmower would not appreciate running over. Okay, 
So I do want a little bit of the, the dark green seeping through. I don't want to completely cover it. I mean, that would have defeated the whole purpose of uh, putting the dark green down to begin with, but. some cold medicine. It helped a little bit, but then we went outside. <laughs> oh, I did have a mask on the entire time we were outside, just because the second I stepped out on the porch, I was like, oh god, no. I could just feel the sneezing and wanting to start. I was like, yeah. Let's just, uh, let's just wear this on the way. And, uh, I took it off when we got home, and now I'm like, ugh. So stuffy. Obnoxiously stuffy. on getting in our different shades of color here on top of our bush line and I mean he's got a little bit of variation in there but was that you? Yeah, sorry. Okay. I wasn't sure if it came from outside or not. Um, but a lot of it's kind of similar. Sorry about that. Didn't realize we weren't fully up here. Alright, so I hope everybody's Monday's going alright. Ours is a little... Oh my god, people, stop with the beeping horn. It's so bizarre. I don't understand why people are out there. They don't normally do this, which is why I'm surprised. There shouldn't be any reason for it. no logical reason that I can think of. Uh, ours is okay. A little rough, but it's okay.
just gonna put it here. Crunch, crunch, crunch. So this is the paint box, um, simply chunky fiber that we're working with here at the moment. It's a little bit shiny. Um, it is super soft when it's brushed out. I mean, it's not bad to, um, to the touch uh, when it's still in its, you know, uh, applied yarn state. It's still pretty soft there, too. It'd probably work up pretty nice. So that yes I did. Okay. Oh hey, you look familiar. That was like still in its little twisted uh cone state from the last time I used you. Probably for the trees. in a small spot so we don't need to go too too thick of a piece of fluff to start out with here as we tap this guy in it's gonna get all pulled down in together Color's gonna get a bit tighter and a bit more concentrated. So until you're sure how much you want in there, the less is more method might work out better for you. Time of year, I suppose. Peabody. That's enough. Ooh, she's being so bad today. What is his deal? My goodness. I'll tell you, it was kind of trippy that the heat was running last night. I'm like, why? Though I was sitting here, I think I had, um, 
I had fuzzy pants on for a little bit, but they were thinner fuzzy pants. And uh, I can't sleep in pants, I have to sleep in shorts. So I was sitting here and I had stretched my legs out because my knee was starting to bug me again. And uh, I had felt like this cold sensation around my legs and I'm like, that's weird. I was like, is it just that chilly in here from me, you know, unfolding my legs from being up against myself sitting in the weird way that I was sitting? And uh, I didn't think much of it after a couple of minutes. And then Little came in and she was meowing at me. And I turned to the side and then I felt the same cold sensation. I was like, oh, fuck, I still have the window open. <laughs> and it was like... 37 degrees out. I'm like, yeah, we should probably shut that. So. Because, like, I have a blanket half over the window. So not that much of the cold air was coming in. Because I have a fan in the other part of it. So the fan was off. But, um, it just kind of suddenly hit me that, hey, dumbass. You still have the window open. I was like, oh, you're right. Yeah, we should probably, uh do something about that. I don't usually worry too much about it because um, the air ducts in our room don't actually seem to do anything. Like, we never seem to actually get any heat or AC out of them. We'll get cold air come up out of them when the wind blows. <laughs> so I think there might be a hole somewhere. I mean, the rest of the house gets warm or cold, depending on what's running. But uh, it got to the point where it was just better to... Uh, tape over those ducts because um, they weren't doing anything. There was not even the slightest hint of warm air seepage or air conditioning. So we're like, um, yeah. Okay. Don't know what's going on here. And I just did that, so I wasn't that worried about making sure that the window was closed and I saw the frost advisory. I'm like, oh, I'll shut it when I when it gets cold enough, and then just kind of forgot that uh, it was running. Oh, got some dry ass skin on my arm. Oh, one of those things. Once I start feeling itchy. All the time distracting myself away from it. No, I know we kind of have a tree trunk here, but I think I'm just gonna fill in over it because it's not gonna be that important of a player here as we go forward. I'm gonna leave this guy, right? But his other friend here. I'm not going to cover over him too hard. But at this point. I think we're just going to handle him this way. Alright. Hello, how are you? Hope your day is going well. Sorry for the snuffles, I am dealing with allergy issues. That time of year here. All this up and down with the temperatures, the trees are going crazy. Spewing as much pollen as possible.
You see stuff all up, I guess. Yep, pretty much. Hey, Zorts. Pretty much. A Nisi Snuffle. Oh, my goodness. At least I could breathe last night when I tried to go to sleep with the cold medicine. That was nice. That's been a rare occurrence. In the past month. Ugh. They actually didn't card Russell when he went to get the Dayquil. I'm like, take your wallet, take your ID. They're probably gonna card you. I don't know if this particular grocery store chain was just like, fuck it. <laughs> Cause it's one of the, um, I don't know how big of a chain they are. But I'd never heard of them till we moved here. I know they're a lot more expensive than Walmart on some stuff. But they're also like right down the street and we don't have to go very far to get it. If we need something quick, it's only like one or two things and we'll just pop in at the place down the street. Um, Harps. H-A-R-P-S. When uh, I was looking at some real estate trying to get an idea of a short list of potential places that we may end up in down the road. I was actually looking at what grocery stores were, um, yeah I think so, what grocery stores were nearby, like either public transportation that I could use since I don't really drive um, to get there or stuff that I could like walk to or that might have a grocery delivery or something. Um, I was surprised to see IGA in some areas still around. I thought that they had closed up entirely. Um, so there had been one or two in the area I grew up in and then they kind of vanished so I thought they just disappeared. But uh, there was still a couple around. I was like, oh, okay. That's fascinating. You're eating dinner, playing Stardew Valley, and lurking. Hey, no worries. Lur lurkers are more than welcome. That's that's what half the people are in the chat, is lurkers or bots. <laughs> yeah, we have Walmart... Well, we have Walmart Supercenter... And Walmart Neighborhood Market. There used to be Walmart Express, but that was a test project that they did that they did away with. Um, so now we used to have an Express, a Walmart Express in our town, but that got closed up. So now the only grocery store in our town is Harps, and then there's a Walmart Neighborhood Market in the next town over. It's about 15 minute drive maybe and then there's like three no two super centers in Fayetteville and possibly two neighborhood markets in Fayetteville um, you know Walmart uh, Walmart Grand Capital it was so weird I never knew Walmart did just groceries until I moved down here or no, the one visit I did, I found that out. Because um, at that time, Russell and his mom were in an apartment complex that was near one. He's like, come on, let's go to Walmart. We're going to go get some, some snackage. And I'm like, okay. And we walked over and I'm like, this isn't Walmart. This is a grocery store. He goes, no, it's a Walmart grocery store. I'm like, what? I'm like, no, Walmart's a super center. He goes, no, no, they have just grocery stores down here. I'm like, that's weird. I had a really hard time wrapping my head around that. 
Yeah, you're seriously considering getting the fuck out of Indiana? That bad there? Russell's been, um, intrigued by some of the law changes that have been happening in Michigan. Um, I've never been to Michigan ever. Um, we're not real happy here. Um, it's getting more stupid by the day for us. I would love to go back home to New Jersey, but I, we just, I don't think it's feasible. Um, I, I knew the public transportation system up there. I could get around to where I had to get. Um, I was comfortable with figuring that out, but um, I don't think it's financially feasible unless something changes by the time that happens, but I mean, there's the dangers of renting and getting um, increased out of our price range, and um, if we get a piece of property, the taxes are so high up there that I don't think we'd be able to pay them. Michigan definitely has more progressive laws, but the housing market's ridiculous. Yeah, I was looking at some of the prices and I'm like, hmm. I mean, if we could swing it, because we don't need a lot of room. We really don't. We're used to like having like studio apartment basic level room to function in. Um, so we were considering tiny house or slightly bigger than tiny house, but um, we'd have to find a place where the building codes allowed for it. Um, and if we could, we were considering doing like a small cheap piece of land and slapping one of those on there if we could have get away with the property taxes um, or getting a slight fixer upper that seemed to be in our tax bracket budget which is tough to find because um, we were trying to see if we could find something similar to the taxes that we're paying here um, we're paying between 385 to like 425 a year. So aside from your sister, you got no reason to stay in Indiana. Mm. I mean, I was looking at a couple of places and I was like, well, maybe upstate New York. They've been having earthquakes lately and I was shocked as shit. I'm like, since when does New York State have earthquakes? Um, they've had a couple recently and I'm like, oh, damn. I don't know if I like that. That's why I don't want to go to California. Number one, it's too expensive for us. Way out of our price range. Um, for what's feasible for us. But, uh, secondly, the, the earthquakes and the mudslides and all that. I'm like, I, I can't handle this. And the fires, I can't handle California. I'm sorry. Hats off to those that can just take it in stride, but I, I can't do it. Um, <laughs> I just can't. New York's just as bad as Cali cost wise, really. Um, yeah, I don't know. I know um, I had Florida on my short list, and then Florida went batshit crazy recently, like more so than I'm willing to put up with. So, and I was always a little on the fence about Florida because I was like, well, I mean, a hurricane comes in and fucks you over, you're fucked. So, I mean, especially in the insurance for housing has been going up exponentially because of all of the hurricanes and shit. So I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. Um, I was briefly considering Tennessee and then Tennessee also kind of went a little extra batshit crazy and I'm like, mm. I don't know about that either. What was the state? You said that you found out... Husband. Yeah. You said you found out that there was no law... Or, or there was a law that required no permits for 
concealed carry? Uh, was there, that Tennessee? Are, I can't or was it Kentucky? Exactly. It was there, one of them. There's several of them now. Where like, like you, they passed those laws in the past, like, couple months. Where you didn't have to have any kind of permit for concealed carry. Yeah. And he saw it on Reddit where people were saying, oh, this state's open PVP now. And I'm like, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a PVP girl. <laughs> Let's just not. Right now, anywhere with a conservative majority is going batshit crazy. Indiana passed that a few years ago. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I just... Just sitting back and watching, just, just reading the headlines, like, across the country, I'm like, damn. I'm like, why? Why can't we all just, you know, get the fuck along and just, you know, do our shit and just mind our own business? Like... Like, is that really asking so fucking much? Apparently it is. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I kind of gave up. I was kind of looking at Ohio. There was a couple potential places that might work there. I don't know what their local laws are. We were looking at the price of a couple places and we're like, why that price though? Because we were expecting something to be wrong with the property and we're like, well... It, it does have public transportation here. I, I could probably figure out how to get to there. Um, it doesn't look too bad. Like, the houses around it don't look like they're severely neglected or run down. I'm like, what's the catch? Because, you know, when houses get to be in a certain price range, from experience from where I lived, they're like that for a reason. So, <laughs> if the outside of it doesn't look like there's any problems with it if the inside photos look decent and they are are inside photos so you know the house hasn't been completely gutted or like the roof's not caving in on the inside um then you kind of have to be like okay what's the crime rate at in this town because you know what kind of area is this in because that could also be a major factor based off of where I grew up that was a very dead giveaway if there was like this house that had like five bedrooms four bathrooms two car garage and you're like wow they only want 35,000 for that that's a steal and then you're like wait where is it and then you're like oh yeah no that's okay um <laughs> like right in the middle of like drug dealer central and it's like um yeah the cops are constantly down there they might as well have a substation right on that corner so it's like um yeah no that's okay that's a few that's a little too much for me to handle um especially since my brother was a cop in that particular town for a while so we knew things <laughs> and we're like yeah no that's okay that's okay we knew things that never made the paper so <laughs> Like, yeah, he'd be like, yeah, no, don't, don't go down there. I mean, my brother's living in Florida right now. He likes it where he's at, but he's also, I think he has more money than he lets on because he doesn't want people constantly asking him for money. in like the area that he's at he still has his security camera business up in Jersey that he travels back and forth for a couple times a year plus he's running some kind of store flea market stall I don't know what it is whatever it is we finally did get those shoes he said he was gonna send us and I don't know what I was expecting it wasn't that what he sent um, They were kind of like this weird off-brand sneaker. He was saying beach shoes, and I'm like, so what, flip-flops? Um, no, a couple of them had like some mesh panels on the side. Some of them were like actually kind of like, like sneakers that you would find at Walmart, like the cheap off-brand ones. Um, he must have just grabbed a bunch of sizes that weren't selling and just shipped them to us. There was like two different styles. The one style wouldn't fit me without rubbing places that were uncomfortable and the one size I did find that I could get to fit 
Um, it was okay. So I like took two pairs of those and shoved them to the side for when my current sneakers give out. And uh, there was one, one shoe <laughs> that was one specific size. And I'm like, oh, that would work. Where's the match? He didn't send the matching. He either said the, le the left or the right. He didn't send both of them. And I'm like, where's the other shoe? <laughs> I don't know where it is. I have no idea what happened to it. He, he only sent one foot of one size that probably would have been a little bit better on my feet. I like my shoes a little bit roomy. I don't like my shoes too tight because then they start rubbing and I get blisters and things. And I was like, that one would have worked perfect, but he only sent one of them. And I'm like, eh. Why? That's weird. But, I don't know. He seems happy down there, but... At the same time, I'm not quite sure how batshit crazy my brother is either, so maybe that's why he's happy there. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh... I don't know. Florida gave me pause. I was like... Until all the stuff really started going down, I was on the fence about it. Now I'm kind of on the other side of the fence looking. I'm still like, damn it, why do you got to be so stupid? But, um, I don't know. I stopped looking at it for a while because it's just going to change and be different by the time we're ready to make a decision. It's not going to happen for a little while still, so still have a few years before we have to figure it the fuck out. I mean, there's a chance we might just end up staying here, maybe going to a different part. I don't... I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, it's kind of looking in several states. I didn't... I don't really know if I want to go out west. I really didn't want to. I mean, some people love Arizona, but I'm like, yeah, but the water problems, you know, it's like, I don't know about this. I mean, you're out in the desert for the most part. And the droughts here were bad enough. They were talking about potentially running out of water in some areas out there, and I'm like, hmm, I don't know if I could realistically and ideally put myself in that situation knowing, you know, if there's other options, I would rather look into the other options. I don't know, man. I don't know. I was looking at, I'd like to be back on the East Coast. That's what I would like somewhere Pennsylvania is a little expensive from what I remember living there briefly it could have just been the area we were in though but I didn't like the fact that there was a state sales tax and then a county sales tax. I'm like, what the fuck? That kind of pissed me off. So whenever you bought anything, you had two taxes to deal with. Don't know if that was just our particular area or if that was statewide. This was several years ago, so I don't know if that's still a thing. I think I was looking at Virginia a little bit, but I don't know. Had to be real selective about town tax wise. Carolinas might work. 
but it depends on what level of DEFCON crazy they're at by the time the time comes. never been to Kentucky, but that might be one of those open PvP states. Although I, I suppose by the time we're ready to do anything, a lot of states might be open PvP at that point. Guess we'll find out. I have to wait and see what happens. Um, we talked about, well, I had talked about maybe trying to go up to New England, and Russell's like, yeah, no, that's not happening. Um, he's like, it's too expensive. I was like, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, we left for a reason. <laughs> like, it was just too fucking expensive. Because he grew up in New Hampshire. It's a trade off. Kentucky gets tornadoes. We get them here too. Just about everywhere is getting them now. I mean, I grew up in New Jersey, and when I was younger, we'd have a tornado watch here and there. Very, very rare for us to actually get a tornado warning in the area that I grew up in. Uh, but now, when I'm like looking at news and weather headlines and stuff, I've been seeing a lot more happen up there with a lot more frequency and kind of wild and uh, I don't know I mean if we do end up going somewhere that's not here um, and it's a possibility I'd like to have a tornado safe room or shelter put in or something because we don't have one here and we looked into it at one point and we didn't really have the money for it because they were hella expensive and I know some people would argue yeah but it's an investment on your your safety it's worth it and yeah but if you don't have the money to pay for it you can't just magic it into existence um, and it really amazes me that houses here don't have them already considering how often tornado warnings pop up it's wild to me that houses would be built in areas that are more prone to get them and you don't have anything like what because we're in um we're currently in northwestern Arkansas. But, um, you know, I don't know, like, I don't know. Like, we haven't really spent any kind of meaningful time in any other state aside from our home states. His New Hampshire, mine, New Jersey. Um, to really be like, yeah, I like it here. I'm willing to deal with the batshit crazy or whatever because this is where I want to be. Uh, we haven't really found that yet. So I don't know. When we do eventually get a more definitive short list put together and when it gets closer to the time for us to needing to make a decision. We'll probably do a trip to that area, try to get a feel for it, try to check out the local areas, see how we feel about it, wander through the towns. That's a big decision, especially when you're moving to somewhere that you're not from, that you've never been to. It's a lot to consider.
There's a lot of factors in there. I mean, we don't have kids, so school system's not a factor that we have to worry about. That's one thing, so. Although at this point, if we did have kids, we would probably be doing online school. Just because things have been so weird and crazy out there. Yeah, that's the thing that that you're eh, about moving somewhere where you don't know anyone and all that shit. Yeah, like, I mean, we don't really have any friends here that we consider real friends except for our one friend, Tyler. That we consider him more like a uh, little brother than uh, <laughs> than really like a arm's length friend. But, um, I mean, there's a couple people that we kind of know, but we don't really talk to them all that much. It was more like work acquaintances, really. Um, but we don't have any, like, hard set friends, so I mean, no matter where we go, we don't really know anybody. Um, just gonna advance the tutorial here a little bit, because we gotta figure out where we want our pathway to be here. But, um, you know, we would have to do some recon because it might look good on paper and then we might get there and drive around the neighborhoods and stuff and be like, I'm not feeling it. Which could potentially happen, so. And it would be like our, this is where we're gonna be type thing, so. Alright, well then he sets it in. He's kind of in the middle. I don't know, it's a lot to think about. So I haven't been able to figure out if this is supposed to be like a walk pathway covered bridge or like a road pathway covered bridge. I have not been able to figure that out. I guess because of how thin this walkway is, it would be... Oh, we are getting some water damage on there. Alright. Let's be a little more careful with that. Where are we? Where did we leave off? Oh, that's not that one. Here we are. Alright, so our sketch... I mean, I guess it's kind of like, I guess it would be a walkway. So, I mean, it's kind of center, but not really. As Bob would say, it's your world, do what you want. I mean, yeah, true. This is true. So, maybe if we... Start back here. Really? It's awfully early to be starting that bullshit. Sorry, you guys can't hear it. Somebody's down the street, hardcore revving their engine and peeling out from somewhere. It's this truck coming by now. Like, you could hear their tires squealing. Like, what the fuck? Right, so there's a slight curve to it. Fucking assholes. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. Like... Is this really necessary? So, we need to be a little bit smaller. And then, I think we're gonna come out a little bit wider. I'm just putting potential lines in place here. Hate the people in this town. Getting on my nerves. 
I mean, you're probably going to run into that no matter where you're at, but it's just seemed extra obnoxious lately. Okay, so maybe we'll kind of go with a little something, something like that. And then, so I'm thinking we'll actually bring this line up to about here, right? My flamingo's doing a little dance. I'm surprised this pen still got ink in it. I don't use it that often, but because I'm using it on felt, I would have thought it would have used up the ink a lot faster. So we're going to move that line up to there. This is just a cheap pen from the counter at the dollar store, really. And then... I think... He kind of has this a little bit straighter, although this side seems to kind of curve just a little bit that way. So maybe we'll do a little something something like that. Alright, let me put the pen over there. Okay, so... Let's see. Background trees, the middle trees. Okay, that's the road. Okay, so this back in here. Um, all right, this section. So this section um, ends up being kind of more of our our mustard yellow and our um, our buttercup yellow. The faintest bit of lime green, I think. So what I think we're gonna do is I think we're going to start to grab our hunter green again because that's a lot of mustard yellow. Um, so we're going to grab our, our hunter green again and just kind of bring that down into here, right? But we're going to come back with like the mustard and then with the buttercup, I'm thinking we'll do some like shrubbery, stick it up in there just so that it has a little bit more, um, you know, because it'll stand out because this is our, our buttercup this yellow here and then this is our mustard so they're kind of close to each other um, so I don't want to do all mustard down in here and then try to lay this in on top of it that might be a bit much so where is this and then this section in here I think what color did I signal that deem that as um Okay, we're going to do that as hunter green there. Did I not do? We've got varsity green in the very front. So yeah, this was going to be our hunter back in here because it's supposed to be more in shadow. So. Grab this. I would like love to just stick like a tiny doesn't have to be like tiny tiny house like I, I want you know even a single wide trailer would be fine with me but if we do the trailer we definitely want a tornado shelter um, but uh, you know I would like to have a second bedroom ideally if possible doesn't have to be a small bedroom it could be you know just something that we can use as like an office space um, stream room, game room, whatever. Um, and have as an emergency backup bedroom in case our friend needs some place to go. So, I mean, he lived with us briefly for a time and still talks to us, so it couldn't have been all that bad. 
So, um, that's if he's still in the country. He was talking about potentially jumping ship and going somewhere else. I don't know if he's still thinking about that. I don't even know how old the boy is. How old is the boy? He's he's under 30, right? He's in his 20s? How old is Tyler? Hmm? How old is Tyler? Like 26? Uh, I'm pretty sure he's in his mid-20s now. Yeah. yeah, somewhere around in there. He's much younger than us. I can tell you that much. But I thought I pulled more out. I sat it over there. So. Right now he's just trying to finish up getting this tack on degree. To what he's doing. While Walmart's screwing him over on his hours. Like, Walmart says they'll work with you part-time if you're going to school and stuff, but then they're mad that he's not available the days they want him. So the other days they're kind of dicking him over on hours where he is available. There's like two specific days a week that he has classes. He's like, yeah, I'm not available on these days. They put my classes right in the middle of the morning and afternoon. Not much I can do about it. And I think this past week they gave him four hours. Although supposedly they cut hours for everybody. Which seems kind of dumb. But it's Walmart, so... We'll see how long that lasts. I'm not even sure how much he was making there. I forget how much I was making when I left Walmart. I feel like it was 11 something? For overnight stock. I know I took a page cut by like 50 cents or a dollar when I couldn't um, do dairy and frozen anymore. Because my back got too fucked up. Just walking was potentially throwing my back out at one point, so every step had to be calculated. But, uh,. They were starting to do the whole, like I was trying to get a raise right before I left and then I was like, you know what, I, I can't do this anymore between my back and this one manager. I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. So I was like, nope, I'm out. And that was doing overnight stock work. Like, um, overnight stock at Walmart at this particular location that we were at didn't do register. We were strictly grunts on the floor. Get the shit done. You need to get it done now. You don't have time to run register. And there was no reason for us to be on register because um, they had one cashier in the self checks. Right? So when I had applied somewhere else, because we were kind of fucked with me not working at that moment, or at least I felt we were. Um. I would actually applied at Harps, just all I wanted was stock. That's all I wanted to do. Just let me stock the shelves. I'll be good. For some reason, they seem to think that I did cashier work at Walmart. And I'm like, trying to figure out where they got this impression because they're like, they took me up front and they were going to train me on register. And they're like, so it's the same system as Walmart. And I'm just kind of looking at them like this total blank stare. And I'm like, okay. And I'm the whole time I'm thinking... Do you guys think I ran register at Walmart? 
Like, I put on there that I did overnight stock. Nowhere in my forms and paperwork did I say I ran register at Walmart. I was very confused by this. And I'm like... To this day, I still don't quite understand what that was about. Unless they were just assuming that I was trained from Walmart. and Because they had some other people that had used to work at the Walmart Express in town... And when that closed, they ended up getting a job there. And that wasn't overnight. That was just normal hours. So I guess all of them had to run register, but they didn't teach us register in our position. We never had codes to log in. I never touched a register system at Walmart. That was not my job description. And I was just... I never had that explained to me and I'm just like uh huh now I ran register at the craft store but that was eons ago in my 20s and like when I was 18 and stuff and I'm sure register systems are not the same as there as they are now especially being at a grocery store instead of you know a craft store situation so I'm just like I don't think you actually read what I put down or you're making assumptions that aren't there. That they're unfounded. And the thing of it was, I couldn't be a stock person at Harps. That wasn't a thing. It was like stock and register. It wasn't just stock. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, I guess I can try to learn it. Um, In my brain, you know, I was thinking this. And then... During the whole interview stuff, they're like, well, we're not really looking for a stock person right now. What we really need is a temporary manager. And I stopped and I looked at them. I'm like, what? <laughs> and they're like, we need a temporary manager. We're training somebody to be an assistant manager in this location. However, they can't be an assistant manager until they turn X age, which is in six months. So we need a temporary fill-in until that six months is up. And I'm just kind of looking at them and I'm like, uh-huh. Except they weren't going to pay me the assistant manager rate for those six months. They were going to pay me stock person rate for those six months. Which was like less than what I was getting at Walmart. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? I'm like, am I stupid? I mean, I know I'm not the smartest person in the world. I know this. I accept this. However, as you're lifti listing off the duties to me, which included unloading the trucks, putting the pallets in the, the freezer cooler and stuff, like physically unloading the trucks with pallet jacks. I, I wasn't a opposed to it. I was like, okay, I mean, I've used pallet jacks before, I, I get the concept, um, you know, whatever. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, oh, it's the same system here, and I was like, it was on the tip of my tongue, but I was having such an anxiety and panic meltdown in my brain over everything that they were expecting me to do. I, I just, I, I was like, the smart ass in me is like, just shut the fuck up. And I'm like, okay. So I had to unload the trucks on truck days. I was going to be the closing manager, which meant that I had to go and get shopping carts, make sure those were all brought in, make sure the store was cleaned up at the end of the night, you know, vacuum, all that. Um, close down uh, customer service or whatever at the end of the night. And basically kind of the same stuff that I was doing at AC Moore, except, you know, not at manager level. Um... And I was just like, okay. And then they're like, oh, and you'll have a set of keys because you have to close the store at night. And I'm like, I, I'm dyslexic <laughs> and I transpose numbers terribly. And the thought of having the responsibility of security system codes for a business that's not my business, my personal business, um, 
terrified the shit out of me. And I didn't want that level of responsibility. AC Moore tried to put me through their manager um, training program. The, the store managers there was like, yeah, you'd be a really awesome manager. He's like, I really think you should do it, be more pay and all this. He goes, the only thing is that you'd have to move locations. And the training at that time started somewhere at a store in South Carolina. And I'm, or North Carolina or something. And I'm like, mm, yeah, I'm not comfortable with that. And I see the hell that you put the assistant managers through here. I don't want that. The assistant managers at that look at that chain were working like eighty hour weeks during inventory and shit. And I'm during the entire fourth quarter and I'm like, um, that's okay. If I'm gonna work that many hours, I want to be paid for that many hours. I don't want to be on salary. So I was like, mm, yeah, no, that's okay. Um just the amount of shit that they were listing off to me. And it was only going to be for six months. And it was for, like, either $10 or under $10. It was less than I was getting at Walmart. And I was like... So, I have to put myself through this anxiety panic attack meltdowns while you're training me. For less than manager pay... You're not even going to pay me the manager pay for the six months that I'd be doing this. What happens if the chick moves or decides she doesn't want to or you decide that something's happened and she can't take this position? Then what? I don't think I've seen her in there in the few times that we've been in there at all. So I'm like, I'm used to shit going to hell and getting stuck doing stuff that I wasn't supposed to be doing. And there was no way in hell I was going to get stuck with that level of bullshit and not be getting paid for it. And my mind was just swirling and they were trying to show me register my first few hours there after I finished filling out paperwork. And I was such a deer in headlights because I'm like, what am I doing? Like the whole time they're trying to explain register to me and there's specific ways that you have to bag groceries at, gro at the grocery stores. This type of stuff can't be in with that type of stuff. And, and I'm just like, my mind is like literally shutting down while they're explaining everything to me. And I was just barely trying to keep it together. I was fighting an anxiety migraine on top of it. And, um, and they're not really showing me register. They're just having me stand there and watch somebody doing it. And I'm like, I don't learn like this, number one. I need to do the thing. And number two, I am so overwhelmed right now. I don't even know what the fuck is happening. And the whole time I'm standing there, I'm like, girl, what are you doing? Like, I know we need the paycheck. I, I know we need the money. But this is not what you wanted to do. This is nowhere near what you had originally thought you were going to be doing. And it kind of took a turn after they were like halfway through my my application where they're like, yeah, well, we really need you to do this. And I'm like, what? I should have stopped right there when they bait and switched me. But I also felt an obligation because the mother-in-law knew somebody that worked there that they kind of like through connections got me this interview. But by the time I left, because I was only there for a couple of hours that day, um, by the time I left and got home, I was like in a full blown anxiety attack. I'm like, I can't do this. I, I can't do this. And we ended up having to call them and I'm just like, I can't. I was in tears on the phone with the lady. I felt so embarrassed and so humiliated. I'm like, I can't do this. I'm sorry I wasted your time. I, I can't. This is too much. This is not what I wanted to do. I, I can't. I just wanted to stock the shelves. I didn't want to be a management position. Especially just walking into a place and have never worked there before. Like, I'm like, um, I don't know any of your policies or procedures. And you're just kind of throwing me in the deep end. And I'm like, yeah, no. It would take them six months to fully train me, I believe, because of, you know, my learning abilities. And for me to be comfortable. And I think they were expecting me to be good to go in two weeks. And I'm like, that ain't happening. And I'm just like, wow. Okay. I'm like, I don't know how you can expect somebody to just walk into this position 
I mean, I was never actually a manager anywhere, and I'm just like, what? Yeah, everyone assumes that you've worked. If you've worked retail, you have some kind of register experience, and you hate working for other people. Better being your own boss. Yeah, but it, it was wild. I was just like, this is crazy. I don't even know if that lady is still the head store manager there. I don't think I've laid eyes on her since. If she is there, then she's long gone by the times of the day that we might wander in. But that was... That was all of the danger, danger. <laughs> you don't want to be here. You don't want to get involved in this mess. Bells going off and I was just like... Yeah, no, that's okay. That's okay. I had no idea what I was really getting myself into. And then after... I was actually being shown what I was going to need to do. I was like, oh no, no son. No. This ain't it. I don't think so. I mean, can't I just like go back to data entry or something? <laughs> it's basically what I was doing at the casino. I was taking applications and I mean, I didn't like calling the banks. That was a lot for me to, to deal with and really overwhelming, but I mean, I could do the paperwork all day long. Walmart has one of the worst reps as an employer. Yeah, they, they weren't, they weren't the greatest, but it was what was available at the time. So we kind of had to take it. Desperate times call for desperate measures. We kind of knew they didn't have the greatest reputation and um, the one manager that we had to deal with periodically definitely was the stereotype bad reputation and then we got saddled with him permanently because of his own fuck ups during the day so they didn't want to rotate him out so they were punishing him by making him the always night manager and I'm like you're punishing us do you not understand this just fire him and be done with it but apparently he hadn't fucked up quite enough to get fired from Walmart Walmart makes you cry and kills your soul and makes you quit because they don't want to pay unemployment, so. You have to have done fucked up really bad for them to fire you. They just break you until you can't take it any longer and then you leave of your own accord. Or, oh, my entire back just cracked when I just shifted there. Holy shit. Wow. That was something. That was like three different spots. That wasn't fun. I have scoliosis and then I have some other stuff going on. I think I have some sci sciatic nerve issues as well. Don't know if that's from the scoliosis or not. It could be because my hips are misaligned from my scoliosis the way my, my uh, spine is curved. So my one leg is slightly taller than the other because of how my hips are sitting. So that's fun. I mean, I can I can unload trucks if I have to. It, it might start to hurt after a while, but I can do it. I mean, I can do the data entry. I was doing data entry at the casino. Basically, we had most of our days were paperwork. Is there a truck out front? Where? Out front? It sounds like there's a truck running. Not deliberately in front of us, just the uh, backed up uh, traffic. Oh, okay. I was like, I already got my delivery today. I'm like, what the hell? Didn't think we were expecting anything else. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so at the casino... Now there is a casino, sort of, no, it's not really nearby, it's almost like 45 minutes away. Um, depending on which way you go, it could be closer to an hour with traffic. Um, but it's Indian Reservation Casino, and I don't know if they do the same things the same way as they did in Jersey. But um, 
you know, I worked for in-house credit department, so we took applications from people, we got bank information on them, because they were basically setting up a credit line within the casino. Um, and, you know, we wouldn't necessarily have an application every day, at least at the times of day I was there. Sometimes I would. The weekends were really busy. But most nights during the week, I was just doing paperwork. Like, we were updating people's bank information. You know, we every so many months, we had to update somebody's file just to make sure that they weren't getting in over their heads somewhere else and if we needed to shut their credit lines down or put temporary holds on them until they got their other debt owed elsewhere under control. So, I mean, I, I was constantly running reports, filing, um, entering report information into computers, you know. And it being New Jersey and the casino, we had to sign everything in triplicate and all that shit. So, I mean, that shit I can do. I can figure out that shit. That's fine. And I didn't necessarily hate... Well... Okay. I had a love-hate relationship with working for AC Moore. Um, I loved being around all of the craft stuff. That was home to me. It, it, it was it was fantastic. I loved being around all the new stuff and, and picking the other merchandisers' brains. Well, what's this for? You know, what do you do with this? And, um, you know, talking to the lady that set up all of the classes and the teachers and stuff that were coming in and out and... She did all the display boards, like there was two of them that would do the display boards for different merchandise on different end displays and things. So I loved talking to all of them and uh, finding out, you know, what they did with this, that, or another thing, or, you know, just, just getting information about products and stuff. I, I loved that. Um, some of my coworkers I did not love, um, but I mean, I guess you would really run into that anywhere if we're going to be realistic about it um, some of them I really couldn't stand with a passion and uh, just wanted to have my work day end so I did not have to deal with them anymore because they just seemed to make life more difficult and sometimes I mean the customers were like your general run-of-the-mill customers but then there was a few that just made me want to walk out the door and never come back there were definitely days that I was like I'm done with this shit um and the longer I was there the more I was seeing attitudes from people coming in to return stuff and whatnot when I was moved up to front end Front end was rough. I would have rather merchandised than did front end. Um, but like things nowadays are like going to like automatic order where, you know, when they go through the register, it's like, oh, when it gets to a certain amount, then we're going to reorder it automatically. So, I mean, at least like at grocery stores and stuff for the most part, unless there's a special sale coming up and you need to manually input how much you need. A lot of places are moving to this auto order. So that way you're getting just what's sold to keep, you know, costs down and stuff. And I get that and everything. So I don't really know if I would be doing merchandising nowadays like I was before. Um, I'm not sure how I would feel about working at Joann's because as long as I didn't have to measure fabric, I'd probably be okay. <laughs> but uh, my, my ruler skills are not the greatest and cutting straight is not the greatest. Although a lot of like the fabric places will have like the little divot in the table that you sit the scissors in and so you don't get all jagged. But, um, you know, I could probably deal with it. But, um, I almost went to work or tried to work for Michaels um, before or when I was going to leave the casino, I was considering going to Michael's if we were going to stay uh, up in Jersey. But then we decided that we were jumping ship because we just couldn't afford to live up there on our own. 
and things were getting stupid with my parents at that point in time. Well, my mother, really. But, um, that's a whole other story there. But, um, so we ended up leaving the state because I could have, turns out, gotten hired at Michael's because one of the assistant managers that I worked with at AC Moore ended up going over to the Michaels that was um, right down the road from our location. Uh, so, I mean, there's a good chance I would have been hired there because I saw him, we were up there on a trip one day looking for something and I saw him in there. I'm like, what are you doing here? He's like, what are you doing here? So we got to talk for a few minutes and stuff. He's like, well, if you ever need a job, hit me up. And I'm like, okay, if I'm ever back in this area. But, um, cause uh, I worked with him a lot being up on front end and him being an assistant manager. I was basically assistant manager most of the time when he worked because he was always outside smoking. Like we could never find him. I'm like paging him and paging. I'm like, what the fuck? And then there were times where I just had to make an executive decision, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, on like a return or something. And then I saw him up front and I'm like, there you are. And he's like, oh, what'd you need? Because he wouldn't always tell me when he was stepping outside to smoke. And I'm just like, okay. I'm like, you gotta tell me when you're stepping outside. And I'm like, well, you know, expired coupon. I need you to sign this. <laughs> I had to make a sec an executive decision because I couldn't find you. He's like, oh, that's fine. He didn't give a shit. Just like, okay, whatever. So. But, I mean, he was infuriating at times to work with when I couldn't find him. But at the other times, he was okay. Like, there were worse managers out there. He was alright. I would put up with more of his like he wasn't ever nasty or mean or condescending so I, I could deal with him he was alright some of the management in there though had some deep issues that I could not handle at all The first store manager that I was um, under there had serious anger management issues. He terrified me. I did not like having to deal with him. I was always scared to death to have to um, interact with him because usually when he was interacting with me, it was because there was an issue. Whether it was an order issue or something and he never he never liked what I had to say so it was always always um, a surprise when he wasn't angry so especially he got super angry and stressed out when we had vendor shows and stuff and one day he gave me so much shit like there was a store policy where it was three per three people to a line and then you had to open a new one even if it looked like you know it was like if the person had like two items in their hand and you would have had them in and out it, and by time the person who you called to open another register would have gotten up there the line would have been done you know, a couple of the front end people um, didn't really stop and think about that. They were just like, oh, three people. I gotta open another register. Even if one transaction was just about ending. And it's like, okay. So there were days where I got, I was first call on the register list, and my department was like one of the furthest from the front. Because I was kind of in the very back of the store. So. And I, I had to learn to walk fast because of the lines. So I can't tell you how many steps I put in. So I didn't have a step counter then. But um, I'm sure there were days where I walked like two miles. Um, I got up front and I would get up and I'd look up there and there wouldn't be a single person in line. And I'm like, I'm just like looking at, at front end. I'm like, hello? 
Why did you page me? Oh, we just got the line down. I'm like, you could have canceled me. Um, they're like, oh, they we just finished. I'm like, uh huh. Turn around, walk back towards my department. I just barely the one day I had I had freight on every single end of the aisle. It was a heavy um, FedEx and UPS delivery day. Plus we had some stuff from a warehouse delivery that morning and I was just slammed absolutely slammed because we had to order um, extra from some of our uh, shippers that took a while to ship because we had a vendor show coming up so I was told that you know well we have to order extra on this and of course that was the day that the extra stuff started to come in and they wanted this one display full and I'm just like all right and I set foot and the lady who did the department next to mine was a couple departments next to mine she was standing in the main aisle and she saw me coming back and she was about to ask me something literally set foot in the main aisle that went across the back of the store and she saw me and needs to register okay turned around went back up front get back up there I rang out one person and left and went back to the department. Just touched the box that I had been working on originally. It needs to register. I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, there's other people on the floor that have no freight whatsoever. Okay. And the store manager knew how much freight I had because he had been walking around looking at the ends of the aisles. Assistant managers had been walking around looking at how much freight everybody still had on the floor. They knew. They could hear me being called up front. Constantly. This time I had to be up there for a while. And I was up there for almost an hour this time. Because front end, super, well, the front end person liked to chat their heads off. And the cashier liked to chat their heads off. Now, we were supposed to talk to the customers in line, but we weren't supposed to have a two-hour conversation with them. It was like, hi, how you doing? You know, did you find everything all right? Cool. Ring them up. There's your total. Have a nice day. You know, you weren't supposed to be writing their auto, well, I guess their biography. Auto bi autobiography would be them writing it. But, I mean, you're not supposed to be writing their memoirs or anything. You're just supposed to be polite enough and then ring them out and send them on their way. Uh, these two did not seem to understand that ever. And they didn't care. They didn't have freight that had to get up. I finally, now it was um, getting to be lunchtime. And I was last in rotation to go to lunch on my side of the store, which was ridiculous because I was not the last one to come in. And uh, I was hungry. I was starting to feel sick because I was hungry. And I was like, where's so-and-so? I had asked over to customer service because my register was like right there. And they're like, oh, I don't know. I was like, did she call out again? I was like, I, I really need to go to lunch. I need to eat. Can you, like, page somebody else up to take my place? Because I need to go eat. Everybody else has eaten, and it's, like, almost 2 at this point, and I was supposed to go to lunch at 1.30. Uh, and I was getting mad. Or 1 o'clock or something like that. No, I guess I was supposed to go to lunch at 1. Because she went at 12, she went at 12.30, and then I was supposed to go to 1. But the first person never went on time, so half the time I was late going to begin with. And the store manager was up there, and then he started reaming me a new one. First of all, he started yelling at me about why my light was off. And I'm like, I need to go to lunch. And then I guess I was just his target for the day. And then he got mad that I asked where so-and-so was, because I really needed to go to lunch. And then when I finally did get off register, it was like quarter after two. And then he's yelling at me back in the office and in the break room in front of everybody. And I'm like, gee, thanks. 
And then he started yelling at me about why I had so much freight on the floor. And I'm like, I'm sorry, did you not hear them paging me all morning? If I'm on register, I can't be doing freight. It doesn't work that way. Like, the, the one day, I was so mad. I just kind of came back at him. And I was like, I was like, no, you're not going to give me shit for doing my job. I'm sorry, you're not. You're not. I was like, look, I understand there's a lot of freight on the floor. I, I understand I still have to do orders for the day. Because I think it was a warehouse order day. I understand this. And I know there's a deadline for getting the orders in, so as, I, as soon as I finish lunch, I have to immediately, quickly run through my department and try to figure out what I need. And all of my freight's not up yet, so I don't really know what I need for sure, so I'm going to be guessing. Um, I was like, but look, you, you can't... I was like, you can't be mad at me when you're telling them up front, three people to a line and register has to be opened and then you hear them calling me all morning where do you think i was i've been on register all morning like i've just spent the last hour straight up there because i couldn't walk away i was like i don't know what you want from me like either you want me up front running register when the lines are long or you want me back here putting freight up i was like you have to pick one I can't do both when the second I get back into the department, they're paging me back up front again. And he's like, well, I'll tell them not to call you for the rest of the afternoon. I was like, all right then. I no sooner clocked back in. I didn't, like, we were supposed to sign out up front when we came in, when we went to lunch and when we came back. So they knew who was on the floor. I was so pissed off. I, like, couldn't even eat. I, like, choked down a bag of chips because I was so upset at that point. And, um, needless to say, I, I was very stressed out in that job because, because of management and a few of the coworkers that just, you know, didn't give a shit and didn't get in trouble for not giving a shit. And, uh, grabbed our ordering, um, Telzons. There are these, like, big keypads on a handle, on a hand grip. And, uh, found, a, found one that worked, number one, because there was a couple that didn't work. Found a battery that was charged, switched them out. Just stepped into the department to quick get the orders done, because the orders had to be in by, like, three, and it was now, like, you know, quarter of, and I'm like, shit. Needs to register. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? And then, like, 30 seconds later, I heard, oh, cancel, niece. I was like, oh, my God. I almost lost my shit. I was like, you know what? Where's my assistant manager? There's assistant managers in here today. Each section of the store had an assistant manager. Like, an assistant manager for, for fine art... Um, uh, what, what the hell was it? Uh, stitchery and yarn and then kids crafts, which I don't know, I was in kids crafts. And then there was an assistant manager for like the unfinished wood, um, doll houses, like t-shirts, jewelry, and stamping on that side of the store. And then there was an assistant manager that covered the middle of the store that helped out with like the ribbons, the, the flowers, um, the, the vases and like the seasonal stuff. And I was just like, I almost lost my shit because I'm like, where the fuck is the assistant manager for the side of the store? I know they're here today. I saw them. They were up in the framing department unloading boxes of frames that were just back stock. And I'm like, this is back stock that you're going through you could have been back helping me put up my actual freight that came in today like what the fuck like I'm getting my ass ripped out because I've been on register 
and there's still freight on the floor. Where the fuck have you been? Like, like, aren't you supposed to be helping me? Well, yeah, he had me doing this. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. And then I think one of them came back. They're like, oh, I'm supposed to help you with your orders. I'm like, oh, thanks. It's what time? I go home at five. That's great. Do you know how long they refrained from calling me up front to register? A half an hour. And then it started all over again. They paged me again, and I was standing with one of the assistant managers, and I almost, like, I started crying. I'm like, you you've got to be fucking kidding me. I was told I was not supposed to be called for the rest of the afternoon. He's like, just ignore it. He goes, I'll take care of it. I was just like, I was like, y'all? Like, what the fuck? It was horrible. Just like, I'm like, I can't be in two places at once. This isn't gonna work. You, you can't have it both ways, guys. It's either gonna be this way or it's gonna be that way. Now, I don't mind, but I do mind when you start, you know, giving me shit for doing the thing that I was called to do. So, you know, pick one. I can run register, that's fine. I can do my orders, but I can't be in both places at once. But that particular store manager, I did not enjoy interacting with. I dreaded, I looked forward to his days off, because occasionally he would take a day off in the middle of the week, and I'd be like, oh thank god he's not here today. The whole store was less tense when he wasn't there. You could just feel it in the air. The days that he was there, everybody was walking around on eggshells, and you could just feel the tension between all of the employees. It was ridiculous. I'm like, it shouldn't be this way. It shouldn't be this way. Your employees shouldn't be terrified to have to tell you something. Especially when we were coming into vendor show. I will never forget the sight of him. We had a, a vendor show coming in, and since we were a show store, Everything had to be picture perfect, no holes, all this other shit. Um, if there was a hole, we better have a damn good reason for it. And sometimes, like, we weren't supposed to spread zone, which was put stuff in other stuff spots. Um, so we might, like, put a secondary temporary tag and mark it as, like, temporary and move it over. But other times it's like, we need the, the buyers for this company to see hey this isn't coming in why why isn't this coming in like we need to be able to talk to them about it when when they're here like is this just out of stock is this discontinued now should i put something else here temporarily like what do you what do you want us to do to handle this um you know like i understand supplier problems and stuff but some direction would be nice so that we don't have the holes in the displays and things. You know, how do you want us to handle it? Um, so we had table displays of these things called pot perchers. Um, that's what they were called then. I don't know if they're still called that now. They were these little ceramic guys that would like just self deconstruct if you sneezed wrong. They were like these little tiny resin ceramic things. And they'd be like little, little figurines, like little flowers or like little hummingbirds or cardinals or whatever there's a whole bunch of different bird species and um their feet were just wide enough that you could sit them on the lip of the rim of, of, of the pot um you know as a decorative little accent and uh it was whenever we had these vendor shows come in he was adamant that we had to have every missing item in the building it had to be in the hole, no holes, no holes, absolutely no holes. That's all he'd walk around saying, no holes, no holes, no holes. And I'm like, that's great, but if they're not shipping it, what would you like me to do? Like the one company that we dealt with took two weeks to ship. And we never knew if something was back ordered or not until it showed up. Like the one set of stuff that he was giving me a bunch of shit over, it was back ordered. They didn't have it. And I'm like, what do you want me to do about it? They're not shipping it. It's a zero. Like, they don't have it to ship to me. He's like, put something else in this place for now. And I'm like, alright. I left the the permanent tag and stuck something, moved something else over. 
that I had a little bit extra of in the back. And um, the one company that I dealt with, like we had to place the order, the orders were immediately sent, and then we were on the phone with them, like within an hour. And we're like, hey, did you get my order? Yeah, we got it. Okay, I need that two day aired. Oh, we, we can't do that without authorization. I'm like, I'm authorizing you to two day air it. No, no, we need it like authorized from um, someone higher in the company. I'm like, I can put the store manager on the phone. And like, they're like, no, we need somebody from the main office. So some people, like some companies would not two day air it um, after a point. And I'm just like, oh shit. So then he would like start arguing with them on the phone. I'm like, uh, yeah, they don't want to two-day ship it. They're telling me that I don't have authorization to do that. And, um, and he would just like, be absolutely livid. And apparently we were having trouble with the pot percher company. Now, this wasn't my department. It was another girl's department. And she hated confrontation as much as I did. Like... And when he, when the store manager flew off the handle, like, everybody was rattled. Like, 90% of the employees were women in there um, that were merchandising. Actually, all the merchandisers were women, now that I think about it. There was a couple of custom framers that were guys. And I think we had one guy working stock. The office manager was a female, and then the store manager and then the three assistant managers were all male. Um, he would just, ooh, we were waiting for UPS to show up and we were in the middle of our store meeting, getting ready for day one of the vendor show. And we were all up front and one of the assistants had to cut out of the meeting to go unload UPS. Just as the meeting was about to finish, he got on the assistant that went back to unload UPS. He got on the intercom and he's like, yeah, this company didn't show up because they're not here because he was waiting anxiously for the shipment. And when it didn't show up, oh boy, um, I'll never forget it for as long as I live. We were just about to open the doors he walked down the main one of the side main aisles like there was a main aisle that went this way main aisle that went the other way around the store and they like connected into a circle or like a horseshoe shape um he went down the the right main aisle and we had a display a table display and it wasn't empty by any stretch of the means i mean it could use a little bit of filling i don't know what condition the the bins were in the aisle where they had their permanent home but the table display didn't look bad I mean you know it could use a little bit more but it was it was all right it wasn't noticeably barren put it that way he uh, walked by the table of the item that we were anxiously waiting to show up was so mad and we had all kinds of terracotta pots stacked all over this table you know with all the little different animals stuck on the edge of the pots. He walked right up to this table as he was walking by, and he he was he was a beefy guy, like not overweight, but he he looked like he lifted or something, like his arms were pretty thick. Walked up to the table as he was walking by, stuck his forearm out, and just went bam right ac swiped across the entire table. And all we heard was a huge crash from up front and all of us jumped and all of our hands started shaking and we're like, oh God, this is the kind of day it's going to be. And the doors had just opened and we're, we all like seven of us beelined back there around this table and we're trying to pick up the pieces and salvage what, what we can that's still sellable and trying to reset the table. And we're like, oh my, all of us were like, we were, there were several of us like about to hyperventilate. We're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like that was wow we're like oh my god i think i don't know if it was late that same day or if it was a different day um there had been a lady that um worked there for quite some time she was 
she had been there for some time when I first started working there and uh, she was the department manager of the department that I started out in so she was kind of she wasn't really my boss but she was like my direct hey I need you to do this I need you to do that kind of person um, to help her out because I was kind of um, I was half running register and half like tidying the department and keeping it in order throughout the night and she had been in a previously abusive relationship for some years And whenever the office door was shut, you knew it wasn't a good day. And we never knew if we could go in or not because, you know, we didn't know what was going on. We didn't know why the door was shut and we didn't know if they were on a conference call or if the door was just shut because it was just shut that day. But like we had to get in there because we had to use that computer to make our signs our label printer for the scan labels and price tags was in there our price guns because for a while we were still manually pricing things um, and, uh, and and our telzons were in there that we needed to scan the stuff to make our labels and things um, and to do our orders and there were days where we were like can, can we go in the office and like nobody knew and like I finally had to like track down an assistant manager I'm like hey hey I need a tells on and they're like yeah I'm like the office door shut and he's like oh and I'm like I need you to go get me a tells on because I don't know why the door is shut and I don't know if we're allowed to go in there like I don't know what's going on and everybody's afraid to go in there right now like like all of the merchandisers were, were scared to death we're like mm, do we go in there and like no no one was brave enough to like open the door and figure it out because um, we didn't want to get screamed at and the one day that the lady that had been in the abusive relationship was in there and the office door had been shut and she had brought a couple of telzons and batteries out with her and she put them in the classroom she goes hey the, the telzons are in there and she looked really shaken I'm like what's wrong and she goes um don't, don't go in the office for a while I'm like, what's wrong? And she's like, he's in a mood. Um, I was in there and he just scared the shit out of me. Uh, he's like, um, she's like, uh, he just picked up one of the phones in the office and they were like big phones. They weren't as big as the one on his desk that he apparently did this to. But um, we had a, like a, a full version and like a half version that had like six or seven lines on it and stuff. Um, he goes, he just picked up one of the office phones and threw it into the wall. And we're like, oh God. She's like, uh, don't, don't, don't go in the office for a while, if you can help it. She goes, I put some scanners in the classroom. I was like, oh boy. He had some serious anger management issues. Like, I get that he was, uh, I wish I was making this up and I'm not. Um, he was the son-in-law of the owner or the primary owner. There, it was a... He wasn't the sole owner, but he was the majority owner, I guess, of the craft chain. Apparently he had another partner that um, started it with him, but he wasn't as prominent a face in the chain, so I think it was just like a, a silent, either a silent partner or um, a very small majority partner, or I guess minority partner. It was a very small portion, I guess, because this dude ran the show. Um, and the owner, the primary owner of the chain lived, um, like 15 minutes from the store, 20 minutes from the store. And, uh, he married his daughter who was our office manager. Like the whole family had their hands in the store in one way, shape or another. Either they worked out of the main office, they were buyers for the company, constantly traveling back and forth to different countries looking for new merchandise to, to sell at the store so it wasn't unheard of for the office manager's mother to be in China looking at new flowers and stuff and to uh, to buy to to sell in the store and whatnot and so it was it was a very um, family heavily family run thing 
So I, I get that he had some pressure on him since he was a son-in-law. It was much better when he got moved up to district manager because then we didn't see him as much and everybody relaxed a little bit because the dude that took over the store in his place could be a bit of a hard ass sometimes but he was nowhere near as terrifying as the other guy so um, we relaxed a little bit I mean he could still be pissy and have his, his bad days but we weren't as afraid of him you know, it would just be like, yeah, okay, you're having a little frustration, anger at the situation. Okay, you know, we could deal with that. It was much lower key than the other guy. But whew, he, he had some issues. I don't know if he ever got any help with that. I don't know if this only came out at the store. But wow, he could be terrifying to work with. It wasn't just me. There were there were much older people, merchandisers that worked in there that they they were not a fan of his bullshit at all. At first I thought it was just me, and they're like, no, no, that's not just you. Like, we all gave him a wide berth. I think the time of year that I loved and hated at the same time was inventory. I loved doing inventory in the stockroom. I was on stockroom inventory team once, twice, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. We spent the whole day, like we were in at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. And we were just holed up in teams, teams of two in the stock room, digging through all the shit back there, marking it as counted, adding it to count sheets and stuff. I was usually doing the counting and not the count sheet, but I loved it. I did not like inventory when I was on the floor because it was a whole different animal when you're trying to do inventory on the sales floor. And we had um, Regis come in and do the bulk of the inventory. However, there were some things Regis wouldn't count. So Regis wouldn't touch individual things they would do like boxes and jars and stuff like you know larger things they would not touch small individual things and by small individual things I mean like sheets of scrapbook paper um the rubber stamps because they weren't clearly priced because you had to go by the colored dot on them and then go with like a price chart because the stamps some of them were so small you couldn't get the price on them um they wouldn't count suction cups they wouldn't count sun catchers like loose sun catchers they wouldn't count these tiny little stained wooden letters that we had that um, a lot of the sorority houses would come in to make their sorority paddles or plaques or whatever they had to do um, so all these little tiny different size stained letters, they wouldn't touch those. They wouldn't touch the cut out wood shapes, like, you know, like 50 cents, 25 cents or whatever. They wouldn't touch the, the sheets of felts like this. Um, they, I think we had to count the overstock bins for yarn. No, she might have had to count the whole yarn department herself. They wouldn't do the embroidery floss. Um, the stuff that they wouldn't do was more than what they would do, but they would still be there all day. Um, like, my department, I had to count suction cups, sun catchers, um, the little animals. We had this display from Safari Limited that was all these little plastic animals of varying sizes. Some of them were like the little baby ones that were like three ninety nine a piece or whatever. And then there was the big ones that could go up to like ten ninety nine a piece, depending on what they were. Like we had a fucking woolly mammoth that was like, that fucker was a weapon. Let me tell you, 
I had never known a child's plastic toy could weigh that much. That, that thing was dangerous. You threw that at somebody's head, you were gonna hurt them. Um, like that, that was heavy. That thing was like $12, I think. $10, $12. I had to count that entire fucking display. I had to count every sheet of felt. I had to count every sheet of craft foam that was like this, but it was foam. Um, what the fuck else was there? There was other stuff that I had to count. Oh, and then when I was done that, then I had to go to somebody else's department and help them count their shit. But it wasn't that you were just counting the shit on the floor. You didn't get to come in early when you were doing floor count. Oh yeah, we had to open up every single display table because the display tables had storage underneath of them. And we had to um, inventory whatever we had stored in the tables. Sometimes we didn't even realize what was stored in the tables. Some tables didn't have anything. And then other tables, you opened it up, you're like, holy shit, what's all that doing in there? <laughs> I did not remember that being there. Um, from like a previous table display that we had too much of that we didn't want to go to the stock room. So we just shoved it under the table and put the new thing on top of it until the next time it was coming up on sale. And uh, then we'd have to put signs everywhere, do not inventory this, do not inventory that. Um, but the, we don't, we didn't have shirts on that said, you know, um, do not interrupt or anything or inventory in progress. Um, <laughs> We'd be sitting there in the middle of counting and people would just come up to us and they're like, hey, do you work here? I'm sitting in, a, in the uniform shirt and I know a lot of it's just, you know, icebreaker because, you know, it's like, what do you, how do you approach somebody that works here? Um, and uh, I'm sitting on the floor cross-legged with a bunch of shit pulled out in my lap trying to count it back into the bin and I'm just like looking at them. I'm like putting my finger up like one one second please one second and um because I'm trying to you know dyslexic brain I'm trying to remember what number I'm on and I'm trying to quick write it down I can't tell you how many times somebody asked me a question and they were just going on and on and I didn't get the chance to write it down and then I'm just sitting there frozen and I'm like fuck what number was it and then they looked at me and they saw that I suddenly couldn't remember where I was They're like oh I'm sorry like it's fine and I, I think I was like on number like 150 something the one day on something and I had to I was so mad I had to stop dump everything back out and restart again because I could not remember what number I was on the worst though was having to do inventory count while being a front-end supervisor because there was stuff up front that I had to count so we had storage under the registers. So <laughs> I cannot tell you how many goddamn Lego pens that we had that didn't sell that I had to fucking count. I think I was up to 350 at one point because we had them under like four different registers. But it wasn't that I just had to count them. I also had to run register at the same time. So when the lines got backed up, I had to pause where I was and then go open a register. And people were like trying to check out at the register I was at, even though I had all these Lego pens like pulled up on the counter because I couldn't have them on the floor. And then somebody would be like trying to open their register and I'm like spread out over it. I'm like, take a different one because... Um, I'm in the middle of counting that one and I really don't want you to touch what I've already counted because what I've counted I've already put back underneath. Please don't disturb my count. It, it was awful and then like I had to move somebody out of that register when I had to count there. Especially if that was their permanent register. If that was their permanent register and they were our cashier for the day. I had to wait till, till later at night when it calmed down a bit or when they went on break to uh, get in there and um, try to count their stuff underneath the register. And then we had to count the front of the registers. Wait, did I have to count the front of the registers? No, we had to count the Sanrio display, the Hello Kitty stuff. Oh, Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty. I wanted to strangle Hello Kitty so much. I hated how they did their pricing. 
at that time. It was god awful. They had the the Hello Kitty stuff came in these plastic bags around it to protect it from shipping. And the barcode was on the bag. However, because it was stuff that would, um, it was an odd thing. It was kind of like our seasonal stuff. We had an outside vendor, an outside buyer that would come in and they would fill the racks most of the time. They would bring the merchandise in themselves and they would reset the rack and um, do the new planogram setups and stuff. And um, a lot of the times the stuff wouldn't be in our system. So we couldn't scan it. We had a, a book made for every single register that had any potential product that we could have possibly have gotten from Sanrio in case the bag came off of the item or it wasn't scanning. So we could look up how much it was supposed to be. These weren't small books. <laughs> So we would end up holding up lines trying to figure out how fucking much it was or I would get somebody off the floor and I'm like, hey, I need you to come up here and help this customer find out how much this thing's supposed to be. And if you find it in the book, I need you to tell me and show me how much it is so I can write it down and um, stick it with the item. And I'll hold the item personally because I don't want them to go back through a different line and that cashier not believe them after I specifically had you do the thing and I know what's up with it. So, and I don't want them trying to pull a fast one on the cashier. So I need you to tell me how much it was, show me the item, so that way I'm not holding up a line because they're still kind of shopping. They're not done shopping yet. Okay. The one day the girl went through the book twice and couldn't find the item. <laughs> we found a similar item. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know, man. I'm like, you know what? Another one of those executive decisions. I'm just like, it's close enough. <laughs> it, it's gotta be close enough. It, it looked like the same item. It just had a different character on the front of it. I'm like, fuck it. It's gonna be this price today. Cause I don't know, man. That, that's Hello Kitty shit was expensive though. That was like 40 off coupon territory. And then you had the little old ladies that would come in. And the coupons would say once per visit, I think. Not like one per day. So there was this group of like four, three or four little old ladies that would come in with like a stack of coupons. I kid you not. They would get their yarn. The yarn was expensive, especially some of that higher end shit. And uh, they'd bring their shopping cart up front after they picked out their yarn. And they would sit it behind one of the display tables up front so we couldn't really see the cart. And then they took turns going through different registers. And um, this, the, the second store manager that I dealt with being there saw them and he's like, I've been watching you go through like every line. He goes, this is going to be the last one today. And she's like, well, it says on the coupon per visit. And he's like, and she's like, well, what constitute as a visit then? Because I could be just visiting this constantly and it doesn't say per day on the coupon. <laughs> he's like, all right, I need you to at least 
exit the store and then come back in. So if you could take your thing to the car and then come back in. He goes, I can let it slide then. But he's like, you can't just keep coming out of line after paying for the thing and going right back to your cart and grabbing another one. It was just like, oh my god. Man, you do not get in the way of little old ladies and their coupons. You don't. <laughs> you just don't. I'm sure they did it for years and, you know, we're so busy up front. I'm just like, what the fuck ever. I don't care. I don't care. If you want to wait in these fucking lines, especially on Saturdays when the lines were crazy, I swear, as soon as noon hit on a Saturday, it was just like non-stop lines some Saturdays where I had the kids from the floor on the register non-stop. There would be some Saturdays where like every 20 minutes I was calling all available and we had every single person but like two people manning the floor up front and I was just like like why? I mean it kept me in my job but it was wild I'll never forget the day they had to install the security cameras because we didn't have them at first but then the theft was getting out of hand and it wasn't what you would expect like we were kind of thrown at first because we didn't think people would do this especially brides like grown-ass women um we <laughs> there was like a wedding department where you know you could buy like the tiaras and then the veils and you know kind of put together your own little look and stuff and um, like the wedding shower favor section. Well, we um, we didn't notice it at first when we were hand pricing the items. Um, they switched to a scanning system. Like they had the scanners there, but we weren't using them yet when I first started. Um, I think so. I think they were just starting to phase them in. I started there in, uh, 99. And, um, so, they, uh, we had to hand price everything. So we had our price guns and stuff. And, um, we were pricing the boxes. Apparently, we didn't realize it was fully happening you know when you're up front and you're going by the price the little price sticker you know you're doing it on the box because the tiers didn't have um, any good area on them to stick these teeny tiny price stickers on where they were gonna stay well apparently when we started scanning them we were still kind of pricing stuff even though we were starting to introduce our scan system because uh, it was taking a little bit of time to get everything integrated into the scanning system. So some stuff would come up item not found, so then we'd have to get a price check on it anyway. Well... One day, one of... or the lady that merchandised that department, she comes up front, she goes, Hey! Um, I need you guys up here to start taking the tiaras out of the boxes and scanning the barcode that's on the tiara. She goes, something weird's going on. Where we should have, based on what I've been ordering, there should be a larger sale, for, larger sale numbers for the department, and there's not. And so we're like, okay. So, come to find out, I guess some of the brides didn't catch on to the fact that we were now scanning the tiaras and the tiaras now had a barcode on the box and a barcode on the tiara. They had gotten the tiara st barcode stickers on the arms of them. Well, <laughs> I had one lady come up into my line and I started to open the box. She goes, oh, what are you doing? I said, we have to scan them on the, we have to scan the tiara itself now. So that's just what they want us to do now. She's like, oh. 
And she had a funny look on her face. She goes, well, I'm not sure how much that one is. I was like, okay, well, we'll scan it. We'll find out. So I scanned it. And it came up this one price. And she goes, that's not what it said back there. And I was like, okay. So I price checked the barcode on the box. And it came up like $10 cheaper. She goes, that's what it said back there. I was like, hmm. Okay. So I was like, let me call somebody from the department up. And we'll get it straightened out. Called her up. And she's looking at the tiara. And she's looking at the box. She goes, this came out of this box? And I was like, yeah. And she had a perplexed look on her face. And I was like, oh, that's not a good look. She goes, I'll be right back. And the customer went with her. And she came back up and the customer's like, I don't want it. I was like, okay. So I had somebody void it off because at that point I don't think I was able to do the voids um, and so I said to her after the customer left I said what the fuck was that about she goes the customers are taking the expensive tiaras out of their boxes and putting them into the cheaper boxes and they're swapping them and so that when we go to scan the box it's coming up the cheaper price instead of the actual price of the tiara so that's why we have to start scanning the barcodes off of the tiaras now they're, they're switching them back there and i was like son of a bitch really i mean we already have a 40 off coupon like what the fuck <laughs> so then it got to the point where they had to install security cameras right over that section I was just like, holy shit. The one day, one of the store managers, I think it was during Black Friday weekend, we had um, tabletop water fountains on special. Store manager's office is right near where the hallway is to go back to our bathrooms. And he saw somebody, you know, kind of pushing the cart back towards that way. And it was fine. Most people leave their cart in, like, the yarn aisle next to it or whatever. And, um, he saw this lady and he ended up knocking on the door. Or maybe he had one of the female employees knock on the door. And this lady in the public female restroom was trying to shove a tabletop water fountain in her purse except it wasn't gonna fit she had her purse out open on the sink and she had the box up and she was trying to figure out how to get it in there and when she got caught she's like oh i just wanted to test it to see if it worked and he's like we can do that out here for you if you really want I was just like, wow. Okay, it was a $10 tabletop fountain. I'm like, alright. Then, they ended up having to install security cameras over in the jewelry department. Because, um, we were finding bags upon bags upon bags of empty, jewel empty uh, jewelry findings. Like the, the, the gold and silver ones. Like the clasps. For, uh, for the necklaces and stuff. Is, and it uh, got a little more prevalent as uh, they started to get more and more glass beads and stuff. Then the glass beads started going missing. But one day, the one Saturday, we were just jammed. We were, oh, it was ungodly. Like, every time I picked my head up, the lines were like five people deep, like at seven registers. I was like, oh my god couldn't catch a breath like an hour later I was finally able to breathe sent the kids back to the floor this is when I was front end supervising and one of the newer girls she wasn't brand new she'd been there for a little bit but um, she seemed really confused and she came up to me she goes hey what do I do with all this and I was like all oh, what? And I looked over and she just dropped on the, the counter like 15 empty bags of glass beads, jewelry clasps. I was just like oh my god. She's like, 
These were just sitting back on the end of the aisle when I went back to the department after I got off register. And I was like, oh my god. She goes, what? I was like, yeah, people stole all that. She goes, oh shit. I was like, yeah. Um, I was like, just give it to me. And uh, I had to put it in our damages bin. I'm surprised they bothered leaving the, the, the packaging. Unless they thought the packaging had security tags on it. At that time it didn't. I can say this stuff because the chain went out of business. But um, I'm sure they changed their practices anyway after I left. But um... Because I think I had been out of there like a good six years or so. Um, before I left the state. And uh, different when the new owner took over, like the the family owner, that guy. He had been training somebody to take over as owner of the chain when he retired. Like almost a year at shepherding this guy under his wing and explaining how he wanted things done and how they did things and and all this is another thing and you know, getting the lay of the land as it were. And uh, as soon as the other guy retired, I think within a month or two, he fired every single family member that worked there. Um, I think it took a couple months for him to get all of them fired, but he, he started with demoting some of them. He demoted some. So like, district manager got demoted back down to store manager. Thank god I wasn't there still. Um, and uh... Other family members were just fired, and it slowly he ended up eventually firing all of them. And uh, the family that had been, the family members that had been working at the store I was at, ended up trying to open a hair accessories store next to the art store's location. So not really like a Claire's, but kinda. And uh, that tank, that didn't last long. Um, so I was glad I got out when I did, but, uh, I think that's how that other guy ended up at the Michaels back in Jersey, but, um, I would try to work for Michaels here, except our closest Michaels is like 50 miles from here, so <laughs> that's not really a commute that's gonna work too well, so... I mean, there's a Joann's, but um, it's still like a half an hour from here on a good day. And sometimes traffic is a bitch I'm getting to in there, so probably a lot of time I would be late. So I don't know. I feel about that and I don't want to work for Hobby Lobby. No thanks. No thank you. Alright. Well. We made some progress today. We got in our tree shades. We got all that sorted and uh, we're working on getting our background grass in in this section uh, we're not quite there yet we still need to finish off this side that's kind of straight um, so I still need to finish off filling into here and we need to fill in this side so I mean still progress it takes a while to fill in the large blocks of color um, so Sunday, next Sunday, this coming Sunday, we'll pick up filling in with this and then filling in with that over there. Um, scheduled streams this week, we have, um, we have, uh, Coral Island on Thursday, Friday the Solo Planet Zoo. And, um, I 
and then the duo zoo on next Saturday. We have, uh, I might try to squeeze in another zoo, not another zoo, another stream. Um, don't know if it's going to be Dinkum or if it's going to be, um, or if it's going to be uh, Planet Zoo. We'll have to see how things pan out this week, but we're going to go see John. I haven't popped in on John in a while. He's doing Star Wars, so um, I hope you guys have a great week. Thanks for popping in and hanging out with me this afternoon, and uh, let's go say hi to John.